What's up YouTube? This is All Things Quick. So today we're back at you with another video. Today we're working on the oil feed and the oil drain. This whole setup, basically this is the oil drain line. So it has to connect to this hose here. And then the oil feed line is this hose here. So basically we're going into the oil pan with this hose and we're going into the oil filter housing cap with this one. That's the easiest spot for me. That's where I prefer to have it. There's other places you can do it for the E46, but that's where I'll be putting mine. We also have our fuel pressure regulator. This we're still waiting for another fitting for the bottom and some fuel lines as well. What I got going on here is I have the fan in place just so then I can make the distance from the turbocharger drain to the oil pan and make sure that I'm not bumping into anything on the way. This whole section is getting bolted up together and I'm going to cut a hole in the fender for the dump valve right there and get that all mounted up and I hope today that I can have all of this mounted and not have to take it off again. I'm gonna put some gaskets and whatnot between everything and make sure that it is mounted solid and then hopefully I can get some oil running through that turbo but we'll see how far we get. So there's one side on. Most people would probably buy the specific tools so that you can use this and not scratch this stuff but to be honest I don't really give a crap about these cheap little fittings so I just use some channel locks and chewed it all apart but who cares. As long as it functions the way it's supposed to then I couldn't care less what the heck it looks like. Anyways, I gotta figure out what length I need for that drain line and then I need to cut this hose to that length and then I need to drill a hole in the oil pan and that's just gonna make a mess. So I have some extra oil here though. I don't think I have a filter, but whatever, that doesn't matter. We can get a new filter later. So same with this thing. This is the drain. It will sit on the bottom of the turbo like that. This is done. I'm gonna bolt it in place and then screw it into this end so then I can figure out what length that I need for the drain hose. To okay so I got that drain line mounted on. It's going down underneath here and I'm going to tap into right here and I'm basically going to make this insert just as you see it here. It's just going to clear the belt because there's really only one place there that I can do it. So whatever angle I have to clock that at I just don't want to have a gooseneck where a gooseneck is kind of like this where the lowest point is not the point that is draining into because then it tends to back up and that's not what I want. So I'm going to do it something like that and then this drain line would come over here somewhat on an angle kind of make an s bend around there figure out where i need to drill i'm also going to drain this oil so then i can not have a huge spill once i drill this thing just draining the oil here see how black this stuff is who knows how long it's been since this has been changed because this car originally was bought as a parts car so it was being sold as a parts car It's not terrible. Actually, yeah, it is pretty bad. Still not like terrible, terrible, but it is pretty brown. What I do like to see though is that it's not creamy, so the head gasket's still good. So that's a really good sign because that actually probably would have pissed me off if I pulled this out and it was cream. Oil's almost drained out, and I just made this mark. <laughs> Don't judge me on the mark because uh, I tried to do an outline first, but then I realized that that's not going to work. I'm going to drill right in that spot in the middle there and make sure that it's no higher than that because the way that this sits like this just like that so pretty well that it needs to be perfect so you know what that means that means there's no going back now you might be asking how am I gonna make sure that there's no metal chips in there well you know what I'm not so yeah best of luck to me I guess so luckily that piece came out with the hole saw so that's good and also luckily the timing chain sprocket right there uh, yeah I, I almost drilled through that um, but good news is I didn't so that's nice so this is how I'm basically controlling getting most of the the chips out it's coming straight out of the drain plug there I saw a few of them come out so that's good news hopefully it doesn't get picked up in the pickup tube there but super super sketchy thing look at this I chewed a little bit into the timing chain that's really, really sketchy. That's really sketchy. Good thing it didn't go too deep, but still like, holy crap. If that link breaks because of this, I'm actually gonna be pissed. I'm gonna put this drain line on the, the drain flange on the bottom of the turbo with these bolts and these crush washers here with the gasket as well, because that doesn't need to come off from this point. I've just put this in here, put some five minute dry JB Weld on that thing. This is the high heat one. I mean, not a conventional way, but I did it last time on my last car like that and it worked fine. 
fine. So whatever, I'm gonna try it again. We'll see how that works out. I'm gonna put another coat on that, obviously, after that dries and take that stand out of there. And then this also needs to, the hose needs to come up just a little bit, so I might have to reposition that. But we'll see about that once that thing dries. But I'm gonna give that a few minutes to dry. So I just read the instructions on this thing and it's actually one hour that it takes to set that thing. So I'm still gonna leave that in there because it's still kind of putty-like. So it is a little harder, but I'm gonna leave that in there. That sucks. Good thing that I read that because I would have thought that that wasn't working properly. In the meantime, I'm gonna drill a hole in the oil filter housing here, right on the top. Or I might do it right there. I did it there last time, but I'm wondering if I can do it on the top this time. Either way, I'm gonna drill a hole in there and then I'm gonna put the high pressure side to the top of the turbo there and I wanna get everything kind of mounted up in place. So I'm gonna start throwing some gaskets together. All right, so I drilled that hole, put some Teflon tape on there and I got this thing in place. I'm just gonna wrench that thing down and then this side goes over to the inlet over here. I need a flange for that and put a gasket over there and then same thing, but I wanna get some gaskets on all this other stuff first so then I can tie up this exhaust. So I just took all this stuff off and I'm putting this gasket here on the manifold. I have this gasket there for the wastegate itself. Two T3 flanges and the downpipe flange. Wastegate flange is mounted now. It's got the gasket in there, so we're good to go with that. I got the exhaust pipe in to the turbo. I got the downpipe in. I got half of the turbo mounted and I have the wastegate pipe going there. And I also have this finished and I have the drain line finished. So I'm gonna put another coat of the JB Weld on there so then it can just sit there for the next 12 hours or so. And then we're gonna get back to this another day. The JB Weld is all dried up underneath for that drain line. The drain line is mounted, everything's good with that. The turbocharger also is mounted, so those bolts are all bolted up. I have my feed line here. I'm not gonna mount this right this second. First, I'm going to put the wastegate on, figure out where I need to put the hole in the fender right here. Then I'm gonna drill that hole. Then I'll mount the oil feed, and then I'll mount up the wastegate, and then we gotta start working on some vacuum lines. So I've made a mark right there on the fender well where the dump valve will go. I'm going to take this off and then get the hole saw it and drill a hole in there. So here's the flange that I just cut off of the pipe that I'm going to use for the dump valve. I have a hole saw here so I chose this one because this is just a little bit wider than the pipe itself. It's going to be able to sit perfectly right in there. I'm going to put this on the drill and then drill a hole in that fender well. So there it is. I'm gonna clean this area up here and then that's my hole for my wastegate. So I banged that fender well in just a little bit so I could get the bolt to fit properly in there with the flange. I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of dented in a little bit there now. Basically what I've got is this pipe here. So I'm gonna make a mark right around here and I'm gonna cut that so that's flush with the fender well. And then that's that, that's the end of the wastegate. We gotta put the firing ring in the wastegate and then we gotta clamp it down. Just got that cut. Cut, so that's where it needs to be. Now we're just going to put the firing ring in. We're just gonna put the firing ring in the wastegate here. Throw a gasket on that flange and then bolt that down and then that's all there is for that. So there it is, got it all bolted in. Firing ring is in place. Underneath here, it's flush. I wish I cut it just like two millimeters shorter or longer, I mean. It's okay, that's just the plastic cover. It's flush with the metal, so that's good. So now, all this side is all tied up except for this feed line. I'm gonna put some Teflon tape on this and then thread that in. If you're ever doing this by yourself or for yourself, make sure that you're careful because these things are so flipping cheap that like if you tighten it too tight it's just gonna strip the threads right off of that and then you gotta wait for parts so yeah be careful with that. So I just got my feed line in there now. It's sitting up tall, but once I get this fan back in there, I'm going to bolt the fan in and then I'm gonna kind of tuck this underneath there and we're gonna zip tie it to those two little holes right there. That's what I did on my last one and it seemed to work. So I'm gonna, actually I'll do that right now. Got the feed line on, got it zip tied in place as you can see. Now that will clear the hood line. Wastegates in here, have my vacuum hose for that or my boost line. And then I'll need to put this line, pretty much we're gonna run it this way, tie that into the intercooler piping to give boost pressure. Basically put a line to that. Still have to bolt up this flange right there. And then we're working on the other side. I got my mass airflow sensor from my buddy. We're gonna take off this math, pretty much retrofit it into this to meet up with there. So it's not gonna be as much of a drastic angle like this is. And so I'm gonna do that. Have it over here, have this Nissan mass airflow sensor, and then I 
have a three inch to a 2.5 inch coupler. MAF is three inches, but the intercooler piping's two and a half. So it's just a reducer. So that will basically go in this section where that is. So here's the section done here. You know, I don't like these angles that these things have to sit on, but it's whatever. It's it's sealed up, it's good. So I got this stock mass airflow sensor from the E46. I cut it out of its housing just because for now we need to still integrate the Nissan MAF with this thing. So for now, if I put the Nissan one in, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna put this guy in here, slip that right in there. I'm gonna tape it down and then we're just going to run it just like that for now so we can actually start the thing. So that's only temporary. That's just so that it can get a reading from the stock MAF and then we'll put the Nissan MAF in there later. It's obviously not sealed tight, but there's still airflow going past that, so that's good. I just took that EGR plate off. Can't see it that well, but anyways, that EGR plate that's inside there, I took that off because I forgot I need to put some JB Weld inside of there so then I can keep it nice and sealed because this little plate right here is really thin, so I wanna make sure that it's not going to back out. By the way, this is what this looks like certainly not pretty but it is flipping strong like that is not coming off by any means like i would suspect that the the hose itself would break before that thing came apart and it's just slightly like in this spot right here it's just slightly too low so it kind of this is a little bit of a lower spot than the actual drain but that's not much at all the way i had it on my last car was way worse than this so i'm okay with that the pressure of it feeding in should push that across just fine so so now I just have to fill this thing up with oil because it doesn't have anything in it. And I'm going to put an O2 sensor in, in my exhaust pipe there. And then I have to get going with these boost lines to tie that into the intercooler piping and to the blow off valve. So, so I just got this exhaust in here. That's all bolted up in place. So I almost forgot to mention that now I have a O2 sensor in the exhaust. That's the stock narrow band. That's one of two. There's another one that has to go in there as a wide band so then I can read all my AFR numbers. I'm just going to wrap up this video right here and then in the next video we're going to get at those boost lines and we're going to get everything else tied up and then we can start working on the fuel system. With that being said this is the end of the video. If you like that video definitely hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Let me know what you think about this video down in the comments and don't forget to join us on our discord server. Link in the description. We'll see you in the next one. See you later.